Woo! Here we are. Holy cow. Man, this has been a long time coming. And thanks for everyone joining here live. And we're live. And usually we only do this when we have a product release. And obviously, if you've been following along on social or email newsletter, it's time for the Lift 4K. How excited are you? Dude, it's time. Ex excited is like, that's not even the right word to depict the mood that I'm in right now to finally like talk about this. I mean, it's been in the works for damn near two years and like coming back from Harrisburg and like having those things sit there and all the questions that rolled in and this and that. And like, yeah, dude, I'm freaking jacked. Yeah. So before we get into this, we're going to leave no stone unturned for the Live 4K. So be sure to put in your questions about the product or anything else in the comments. And we're going to go in and answer all of them here before we finish up. And we're doing something a little bit different here. So any order, a Lift 4K order on the website, you're going to get a chance to win an additional Lift 4K. So the next 48 hours, if you order five cameras, you're going to have five chances to win a free camera. If you order one, you're going to have one chance. So you can use the code 4K, the number four, the letter K, and save $50. But real quick, my name's Jake. Going to be doing my best to steer the ship here uh, <laughs> live. It's always a little different, a little dynamic when we're live. We've recorded a hundreds of these but it's always different with live yeah. and uh really excited and thanks to everyone taking some time out of their evening here to join us and then chad take a chance to introduce yourself and a little bit about exodus yeah man um excited to be here chad co-owner co-founder of exodus uh you know the 30 second elevator speech is 10 years ago we started this company because we were tired of the lackluster experience we had as consumers and like just being an autodidact and trying to you know, tinker with things in my garage in the early 2000s eventually led us to trying to solve a problem in the trail camera space around longevity, customer service, uh, having elite quality products that, you know, didn't necessarily have the elite price tag that were still affordable to a lot of uh, uh, similar demographic with, you know, somebody in their 20s or 30s raising a family that have kids like you, you don't have endless disposable income to spend on freaking trail cameras, especially when they don't work. So, you know, that was the birthplace or the birth reason of Exodus was to solve some of those problems back in 2015. And like, I'm damn proud to say like, we've been here for a freaking decade, man. It's freaking, crazy. We're going on nine years, I think. Yeah. Um, in May. So it's like, we're not a flash in the pan. And like all the, the haters and naysayers, like I think our track record shows like, we produce good products that Stand match them that. Yeah. Yeah. Of course. Like we do everything that we say we're going to do period. And that's how yeah. we've found success. Plain and yeah, absolutely. And I mean, going back to 2015, the lift one, that's what birthed the company. The, the lift series has been the cornerstone of Exodus uh, since its inception. And so we had the lift one, the lift two, and now the lift 4k. I know we skipped lift three <laughs> because this is such a ginormous step. And we just skipped the whole generation because this thing yeah. is, truly a one of a kind and people say standard camera this is a, you know is it a standard camera this, this is nothing but standard this redefines what i would consider a non-cellular camera that's how to describe this, this is a non-cellular camera because the yeah. technology and infrastructure of this camera is nothing but standard but when we started development on this product two years ago what initially birthed it and what was kind of the inspiration well i think there was a handful of reasons that the product was birth, right? Like the, the market was moving to cellular cameras uh, or connected devices, which we've kind of, we follow that obviously. Um, but there's still a need for regular SD card cameras, non, non connected devices. So let's get, a, let's, let's get in the habit of not using the term regular or standard. Like when we're talking about this, because as you mentioned, like this is anything but a regular or normal or average or standard freaking product. Like, it's it's exceptional um but the need to, ha to use sd card cameras or non-cellular cameras are still out there and i think just over the last decade of putting out podcasts and running just a tremendous amount of cameras i think that now as whitetail hunters we are all very dialed in to what you can gain from running video mode right like versus photo like if, if you're really running these things as a whitetail hunter there's a lot more information that you can get from a video than a photo. And the cool thing about running, uh, you know, cameras and video outside of the added uh, information is like, it's fun. It's fun to go back and watch. It's fun to yeah. go back and break those videos down. And what better way to do that 
in like native 4k resolution like it's mind-blowing man it is crazy yeah it's it's extremely exciting and i think with the transition of going from non-cell to cell cameras too and increasing the number of those i miss checking videos so much now it's cool to you know wake up and check your cameras but i just pulled a camera here last week that was soaking for a whole year i was so excited to pull that card and go through <laughs> videos and see what the bucks were doing and uh and now to do that native 4K video with uh, exceptional audio is, is very exciting. But, you know, we touched on a few of the exciting things about the Lift 4K, but let's dive in just a little bit more of some of the key updates and improvements. And then I want to dive into kind of the nuts and bolts of the camera as well. Yeah, I think, um, you know, visually you see the camera looks different, obviously. Uh, so, you know, a different housing, different tooling design. And that was to not only visually, you know, or aesthetically, upgrade the product uh i think it's very it's a damn sexy looking camera I like the way it's you know uh the 3d tooling and uh, the protrusions and the cutouts like it's freaking sexy like from an aesthetic appearance but there's some functionality there too right the building cable tunnel um allows you to lock the camera up with a single python cable as, as you're attaching that thing to a tree to lock it up securely uh, i know that we got some feedback around the rival camera on that and some some uh request of want to see so that we accomplished that with uh, with the tooling, um, and then like beyond the aesthetics, I think that the only way to build a product like this is to use a dedicated day and, and night image sensor, and to really be able to optimize the camera for daytime stuff and optimize it for nighttime stuff. I mean, you could ha you could do um, you could have one or the other with a single lens setup with an IR filter. But you can't you can't do both because as you increase the native megapixels in that image sensor, you're also decreasing the micron size, which eliminates or or lessens how much light is gathered by your image sensor, which in turn reduces nighttime uh, photo or video quality. So the only way to optimize both are to have dedicated setups, and there's also a longevity uh, improvement there, like getting rid of that IR filter lessens you know it takes it reduces a failure point you're taking a failure point away or out of the equation to you know again increase longevity so you have those two things which dude this is like the image sensor thing is kind of what i get geeked out on like on on this uh with the native 13 megapixel uh image sensor for your daytime lens the largest one ever used in a trail camera it, 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 what was the original image sensor in the lift one? Do you remember what that native size was? The two, two point one. Uh, it, it was, it was less than three because the lift two was a three point one, which does uh, full HD, so that does ten eighty. So 1080 yeah, just, just to illustrate that, so lift two was three three megapixel image sensor. This is 13. thirteen. Three to thirteen is ginormous. That's a huge, huge improvement. Which uh, the numbers are, it's a big increase. But just think of the photo quality because I know the lift two, everyone always complimented, and I at that time it was the best video for a non-cell camera period and so just to illustrate how much better this one is it's it's, yeah. ex it's exceptional it's it's yeah i mean it, it's it's crazy but then on the nighttime side too so the nighttime uh lens and image sensor setup it's only running at two megapixels and some people would look at that and be like well it's only two megapixels how good could it be but what they don't understand from the technical side is when you have limited space on that image sensor and you're cutting down how many megapixels are actually there you can increase the micron size which increases the light gathering capability of that image sensor so by decreasing that increasing the micron size like we're able to optimize the camera for nighttime scenario images and videos so it's uh it's freaking cool man it's damn cool yeah, and an another thing that um, I know there's been a lot of chatter about for the people that have gone to our website and looked at this since it's been on on there is the the power supply, and we'll dive into this Ooh. more. But this is this is uh, I'm trying to think of some some parallel. It's like we're on the moon now <laughs> because we switched from AA <laughs> lithium batteries. <laughs> like we're on the moon now. We we uh, we made one giant leap for cameras. So what what yeah. do we have there? Yeah, um, totally new power system, two parallel, two series uh, design using 18650s. And that number or that term or number specification is probably going to sound foreign to a lot of people. Um, but just think of this, 18650s are used almost ev in every use case where you're talking about 
um, high power consumption or high drain devices that run off batteries. So if you think about um, rechargeable tools, like your, your battery drills, your saws, you have those battery packs. Those are all 18650s. They're used in computers. They're used just basically everywhere except the trail camera space, right? Um, so going to that, you're able to increase capacity. You're able to have a more constant voltage output uh, or discharge rates, which you know helps the camera function considering everything it does is through voltage signals. Uh, so there's a lot of benefits there, which we can get in the specifics. The, the big thing is they're rechargeable, right? It's a one-time purchase. You buy, you can get six for $20, right? So for 20 bucks, you can run that camera for its entire lifespan, 60 plus months. You're going to save $200 alone in, like if you did a cost analysis on 18650s versus buying uh, lithium batteries, you're going to save $200 over the lifespan of the freaking product. You could buy another camera for what you would save in batteries. Right. And I know everyone that runs a lot of cameras. This is the... Uh, the Diderot effect, like you buy a camera, like, oh, I have to buy an SD card. I have to buy batteries now. Take one of the pain points away from every summer when you go spend $100, $500, $1,000 on lithium batteries. You don't have to do that for in perpetuity <laughs> because you can recharge them for the next year, which is obviously very exciting and a huge cost savings. But let's dive into some of the specs. And then uh, we want to answer a lot of questions here. I see some rolling in here um, already. But um you mentioned the dual image sensor. Anything else to share on that? From We talked about the video. What about the pictures? Are they going to be just as uh, breathtaking? Yeah, the pictures are, are are damn good, too. I mean, the camera's built and designed to use as a, you know, a, a trail camera to use in video mode. But you can absolutely run it in photo mode, obviously. Um, it'll shoot up to 24 megapixel images. And again, like that number, the megapixel number is not like people are going to look at that and be like, well, there's cameras out there that do 36. But it's interpolated and we've been harping on some of the the mis uh misinformation i guess in the trail camera space over the last decade and we've talked about the the, the megapixel uh kind of myth you can blow those images up through interpolation but you're not necessarily doing anything for the photo quality you're just increasing the file size and most of the people that follow our follow our con content kind of get that and there's a lot of other people that have regurgitated the information that we put out originally to help educate people which is good um, but there's really, there's no need to, once you go over two and a half times interpolation, you're, you're not doing yourselves, yourself any favor. Um, so 24, anyways, 20, that was a rant, sorry. Um, but 24 mega up to 24 megapixel images, um, on, on that, on that front. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's key. And some other things here too. I mean, it has a 0.2 trigger speed, which is very, very fast, about as fast as you'd want it. Uh, quick recovery time too in between videos, so le less than a second and a half in recovery uh, time, which is pretty exceptional when you think about it. Um, that's been that's a, that's a big improvement from what we had previously. And what about uh, has the detection distance or flash oh. range improved? Yeah, man. Um, so use a little bit of, uh, different hardware on on this side around the the flash um, the flash unit and also even the the uh, detection circuit, but a hundred foot detection circuit with adjustable sensitivity. So that's further than what we've ever done. Um, 120 foot flash range with black flash. This is a no glow black flash, 940 nanometer camera um, using different, again, different hardware to be able to achieve that. So the, the flash is a little more narrow, but it gains us, it gains us quite a bit of distance. So, you know, every, just about every camera we've ever done is typically flirting with that. 70 to 80 uh, feet range. So we've dialed it way beyond that through, you know, different pieces of hardware. So that's, yeah, that's a, that's a good point to bring out. Yeah. Very exciting. So yeah, I see a lot of comments about the 18650s. So you take six, the six of them and picture this. So anyone that has ran a camera and let's say you have a handy cam and it's a, you're shooting 4k video. How long does that typically last? Just, I, I just want people to ask themselves hour, maybe two hours of runtime. Yeah. This camera's going to have nine hours of runtime. Nine hours. That is a lot of videos. If you're running 15-second videos or 30-second videos, that is a very, very, very long time. And so basically, we, we preach to set it and forget it, and you're going to set it and forget it and then come back to a very nice surprise of 4K video with batteries, <laughs> battery life still more than likely when you walk up to it. Yeah. Um, and so uh, not that you necessarily would need the 1850, 18650s, but is this compatible with the SP18 and then the new SP24 that we're working on? Yeah, so let me just, I got like 
30 different renditions of these cameras kind of <laughs> sitting here on the desk, but uh, it still have still has an external 12 volt jack in the bottom, just like all of our other cameras, the same 5.5 by 2.1 millimeter uh, barrel pin connection there. So any of the existing SP18s that are out there on the market, it works with those and it also work with any, um, you know, the SP24 we don't have yet, but any of the future released external power products from us, it's still compatible. And even if you wanted to build your own, you could do that too. It's so the, the operating system on the camera is nine to 12 volts, um, no more than one amp. So 12 volt, one amp external power source, 5.5 by 2.1 millimeter DC jack, and you're good to go. Yeah, very cool. And then, so this is a nine volt to 12 volt operating range. And I see some questions about SD cards. You can put up to a 264 gigabyte card. You want to use a U3 SD card. So make sure you pay attention when you buy your SD card. And uh, I saw somewhere in the comments, someone asked, uh, what about the aiming on this? So th something that mm -hmm. it's one of those things you don't know you'll miss until you, you don't have <laughs> anymore. So like the rival, it doesn't have an aiming device other than your gut instinct. So this has the two inch non glare LCD uh, screen, which is really nice uh, when you're setting it up to make sure that you have it set up perfectly how you would like. And so this is all of the lift cameras have had that. And this is an upgraded LCD screen too. So uh, very, very excited about that. And uh, w what else can we share? Oh, geez. Oh, man. Um, I don't know. Where do you want to go? Like, let's talk about, um, I mean, we talked about the image sensor and we talked about the photos. Um, we've covered the videos. And then what about the, what about the different settings? We, uh, photo, video, time lapse, mm -hmm. one to nine burst, mm -hmm. um, five to 90 second video, which is a lot. I mean, if you want it to be 17 seconds, you can do 17 seconds. If you want it to be six <laughs> seconds, hey, you can do that. Do whatever you want. <laughs> you know, like this is a high end product. You get to decide how you want to use it. Uh, customizable operating hours, which is very exciting. And then, you know, I feel like I don't even have to ask this question, but I'm going to. What, what kind of warranties on this thing? <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is backed by our no BS warranty. Like that's, we've, we've had that since day one. Uh, manu on the manufacturing side, you're good for five years, 60 months. The half camera a is back. Half, a half a decade warranty. And on top of that, if it's freaking stolen or you, squirrels chew it or something happens with a bear or whatever the case is something that something that happens to the camera that's out of my control or our control as a company or out of the the end user's control like we're going to replace it for half off um which no other no other camera company does that they just don't, yeah they just don't and i know some people are probably looking at this this price price range and they're thinking okay well number one you can save 50 bucks at 199 throw in the cost savings from the batteries Throw in the fact that you're going to have a, a, a camera that works when you want it to, and it's going to do its job when it needs to, and it's guaranteed by for five years. I mean, I know it's like you can pay for it now, or you're going to pay for it later when you when you would rather have paid for it up front. Because I think, you know, what birthed this company was the frustration of it's you go and pull a camera that's been soaking all year, or you go pull a camera that was very important to you. I mean, I know we're just chasing deer. But it's very important at the time when you pull that card and, and to be ultimately disappointed. I mean, what what value or peace of mind is worth to have a camera working and you can sweep videos and pictures in the meantime? Yeah, you can't get you can't put a price on time, man. Like especially lost time, lost opportunity, yeah. opportunity cost. Like what is it worth? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And so, I mean, I felt like this camera was designed for me, but uh, who who else is this <laughs> thing designed for? <laughs> That's funny. I mean. You could go right down the line like this. This specific device is much more than just a camera designed for deer hunters because of the video capabilities, right? Like you can go down the line from uh, wildlife professionals or research professionals to trail camera hobbyists or enthusiasts that just like to take photos and videos. Um, but at the end of the day, man, like we're deer hunters, like we we build products for ourselves and guys like ourselves. And I, I think, um, you know, that's that's who we built it for. We built it for guys like us, guys that want to have a reliable, dependable product. Um, and like, there's something to pulling the SD card and seeing the actual videos coming from this. And it's like, it's kind of breathtaking. Like that, mm -hmm. that's, this stuff is coming from a trail camera and not like, you know, a DSLR or a handy cam. Or, or, or camera you're spending, you know, $1,200 or more on. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's it's pretty incredible. Yeah. I mean, in the 
the process of building this, the components that were selected for it. I mean, all of that goes into to, to where it's priced, where it's at. I mean, this thing is built like a tank, bomb proof, and just incredible. I mean, it's throw throw a handy cam or a DSLR on a tree, and I think that's kind of the illustration uh, <laughs> right. to, to, to provide here. Well, the and, other thing uh, is, go, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, go ahead. I was just going to say on the on the on the 4K side, you know, 4K is thrown around a lot, and it's starting to be thrown around in the marketplace. And from an end user can or a consumer standpoint, there's different levels to that, right? Like if if you just Google the different resolutions of 4K, you have um, this camera does native 4K, which is UHD. It's like 3860 by 2160 or something. 3840 by 20, 2160 is the resolution. But then you have a cinematic level to that, which is like what Hollywood uses, right? So you have DCI. 4k then you have uhd 4k and then you have a term like qhd which is thrown around again done through interpolation which has been thrown around on different products in this space so um you know again you can't always go someone uses 4k look at what is being done natively and that tells you essentially mm -hmm. what you're what you're getting so we can say this is the first true 4k camera i to my to my knowledge yeah yeah. Cons for a consumer grade product. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. No, these are all extremely exciting things. And is there any other updates or upgrades that, that we haven't, uh, that we really need to nail down? I mean, I think we hit the dual image sensor. We hit the, the video, the power supply is a very big one. Warranty is huge. Um, the fact that you can use the code 4k and save 50 bucks right here, right now, and have a chance to win an additional camera over the next 48 hours. Um, one question that we've seen in here, and I'm sure a lot of people are wondering, uh, so we have the pre-order now, when do we expect to ship these to customers? Yeah, these will be out sometime sometime this summer. Summer of 2024, don't have an exact date, but I would I would say it'll be geared toward the later part of summer, but definitely before fall. Mm -hmm. Let's see, we'll, we'll go into some Q&A here. So if you have a question, uh, feel free to ask right now. And then also, if you already asked one, you can bump it again. Um, Tate Carter, can you talk about the recharging process for batteries when they are depleted? Yeah. So you want to charge them when they're completely depleted and then charge them all the way up to full capacity. And with 18650s, there's a couple different chargers that we've used, um, where you can set how fast they charge. You could set the voltage that they charge to, and you can set the capacity that they charge to. We play with a bunch of different brand of batteries from, Sanyo from Panasonic. Uh, I'm trying to think who the other one was. Sanyo, Panasonic, Samsung. Samsung was the other one. EBL, Tenergy. Like we've messed with a lot of batteries over the last couple of years. Um, some are obviously better than better than others, but the the cool thing about the 18650s versus like nickel metal hydrides or even um, uh, some of the the new lithium ion AA rechargeables is the capacity advantage that you have with the 18650s and being able to use them in a single device for a whole year, it takes the management portion of like trying to manage batteries, which batteries are charged, which batteries aren't charged. It takes that equation, it takes that part of the equation out because you can run a damn thing for a year on, uh, on, on six batteries. So I think from my perspective, that is a like definite advantage over like the, some of the, the double A rechargeables that are out there, even some of the lithium ion double uh, A's. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I basically run it for the season and take it in and then throw them on a charger and then yep. you'll be ready for next year. And a lot of the, there's different chargers out there. There's like single battery chargers. Uh, a lot of the, I'll call them like docks, charging docks that, that we're using and testing or have, uh, I guess have tested, you know, you can get them from two batteries all the way up to eight batteries. So that's something to keep in mind too. Okay, great. And Noah Stebbins, can we set up strictly for pictures? And how long would the rechargeables last them? <laughs> yeah, you could set it for just, uh, as you mentioned, you could set it just for photo mode. So you can run photo mode, video mode, or time lapse. Um, through testing, I've gotten anywhere from 36,000 photos on a set of batteries, all the way north of 50,000 photos. Now, that 50,000 photo example is a duration is a shorter duration to see how many pictures that would actually 
um, effectively come from a set until the, the batters are completely drained, essentially. So if you were in like a feeder scenario where you were getting, you know, several hundred photos a day, say you're getting all kinds of photos, um, that 50,000 number is pretty indic indicative or pretty accurate. Mm -hmm. As the that duration expands, the length of time that you have the camera in the field expands, that photo count is going to come down because the camera still has, it's still drawing power through its resting current, right? That's something that a lot of people don't understand um, or some people miss. But that 36,000 mark is on the, on the lower end. So you're somewhere between 36,000 to 50,000 photos. But again, some of it depends on what types of types of batteries you're using too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, nonetheless, this extremely, extremely long battery life. So, uh, Buck Slayer, can you talk about how many minutes of video you expect 4k on 32 gig card? How many 90 second clips? I mean, this all right. Do you have the whiteboard you, ready? <laughs> you do not want to run a 32 gig card in this camera. If you're so running you, 4k video. If you're running 4k video. Yeah. You, you, you don't want to do it. Uh, for example, if you looked at a, uh, like a HD, um, like a 10 second HD video count on this 4k file being about three times as large or, or maybe a touch more than that, a touch more than that. So uh 256 guard, 256 gigabyte card will run 4k video for the length of, uh, your battery capacity. So that nine hour, um, runtime runtime specification you talked about that's pretty accurate with a 256 uh gigabyte card as well so you know a couple thousand 15 20 second videos mm -hmm. okay alex good to see you in here um physical size versus the lift 2 and render platform i would say this i mean you probably have one right there i'd say it's very comparable yeah it's yeah, about would, the yeah. it's about the same footprint i don't know it's been so long since we've done the tooling the tooling on, was done on this two years ago i don't know the dimensions off the top of my head i would say it's about four inches four inches wide maybe maybe six inches tall five and a half inches tall yeah I'd say it's like very, that. i don't have a render similar. something here to it's more of a you know the old cameras kind of had that it started square and they kind of went in and kind of kind of like yeah. an hourglass yeah yeah this is more of a i wouldn't necessarily say it's a box but it's more framey like a rectangle i mean it still has a lot of um contours to the mm -hmm. exterior of the shell i guess to help break the visual up on the front but it's more of a square yeah or a rectangle can you run ben can you run hybrid photo video mode no hybrid mode we took hybrid mode out of the camera so i think on the on the post side uh with 4k video you can grab so many high resolution stills from that 4k video. Um, we really didn't just think it was a need and running on photo mode or I'm sorry, um, hybrid mode. That photo is essentially just all, 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 all cameras are doing are taking that first frame essentially from your video or something similar to that. Mm -hmm. It's kind of boiled, boil that process down, but you're taking the first frame of the video and turning that into a photo and letting the video run. Um, we just didn't feel a need for it. And it also helps with the simplistic, um, maybe not simplistic is not the right word, but uh, optimization or efficiency of like recovery times and writing processes and different things that go into getting all that stuff stored to an SD card on the, on the technical side. Yeah, that, that mode's kind of just become obsolete as cameras have become more sophisticated. Um, Anthony, Anthony Rura, um, does it still have the viewable screen to watch it right on the camera? It does. Yeah. So I, as you mentioned, I think we probably glazed over this. This is probably a little bit bigger of a deal. Uh, so you still have a two inch LCD screen, um, on it, similar button layout as you know, our, our past cameras, the tire lift series, but that screen is a, is a non glare, uh, LCD. So I user feedback from any of the lift series cameras. It's like, People love having that screen, but dude, you get out on a super sunny day and sometimes that thing was hard to see. Yeah. Um, so with that, that non glare, it makes a difference. Mm -hmm. It makes a difference on the UI, looking at the menu, trying to set it up to see what, you know, what you, what you're aiming at, uh, how your settings are set. So, um, yeah, upgraded the led or the LCD screen in that. 
Awesome. Appreciate all the questions coming here. Greatly appreciate it. Happy to answer these. Uh, Jaluk, can you run the camera on a solar panel without batteries in the camera? Yeah. Yep. So just like all of our cameras, um, as we mentioned a little bit in, in previous in, in, the, in the live feed, you can run a 12 volt, one amp <clears throat> external power source with the camera. Uh, the camera's always going to recognize your external power source first as a primary source. And then you, if you were to run internals um, inside of it, they are essentially a plan B or a backup to your external source. Mm -hmm. uh, Follow-up question. Can you also run normal batteries if you didn't want the rechargeables? Uh, for those that don't, oh, I missed that. For those that don't use video mode. Uh, okay. Yeah. So you're shaking your head now. No, you got to use 18650s. And there's really, even if you're just using photos, there's no, there's no need to, like you're saving money. We did this for a couple of different reasons, but the price of lithiums right now, you can 24 just, bucks. Anybody can Google this. Yeah. There's 20 couple of dollars for a pack of eight. You can buy these batteries one time for 20 bucks, $20. You can buy the 18650 EBL three amp hour batteries that are good for 500, 500 charges. The batteries are going to outlast you. They're going to outlast the camera. Like it's a one time Crazy. purchase. Yeah. And yeah, you got to spend 20 bucks or 25 bucks on a charger and count that into it. But it's cheaper up front to buy them and you run them forever. Like over the, over the 60 month lifespan on the product, you save over $200 in batteries. I don't know why. Anybody would not want to use them. I, yeah, I mean, it, it's a little crazy that we're the first ones to do it, to be honest, because as we laid this out, it's a, it, it seems like a no brainer, right? It is. I, I think uh, because people don't, it's, it, they're unfamiliar. It's an unfamiliar, familiar battery yeah. to people. And like going into something new, there's always a, there's always a scare of like, how is it going to be accepted in the marketplace? Right. And we had that worry. Like, cause mm -hmm. we, you start talking to people and it's like, oh, we're going to run 18, six fifties. And they're like, they look at you like you, you got a third eyeball popping out of your forehead, you know? But then when you have a chance to talk to people and they understand the value of what they're, what the battery provides, it's like, well, yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Yeah. That makes total sense. Yeah. I'm good with that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And I see a couple of questions here um, asking, so that code, the letter four and the letter K, that's $50 each camera. So if you want five cameras, that's going to save you $250. So um, if the solar panel goes down and switches to internal batteries and then they go down, will it switch back to the solar panel? If, uh, if your panel's forward. charged back up. Yeah, okay. if that if once that panel's charged back up or detects that uh, you have proper voltage and, and current on the external side, the camera will, will switch back. Um, Alex asked, does this have smart video where it will cut video short if sensors aren't picking up movement light change? Uh, not dynamic in length, but dynamic in flash. So the flash will adjust based on what the light metering system is telling it. So if it needs to have more exposure, less exposure, that will change. But the duration of the video, no. We've, we've toyed with that quite a bit um, going back to – and when did we? that was with the render, I think. And we, had, and we did away with it. Yeah. Yeah. That sounds right. Yeah. Yeah. Eric, good to see you in here, Eric. Uh, what is the range detection and trigger speed? Yeah. So earlier we said it is a hundred foot detection distance with a 120 foot adjustable flash range. So substantially more than what you've experienced with some of our other products. So uh, a, a major upgrade, which is that's far. And I know I, we always talk about how to get the best videos and pictures and everything along those, those lines those field edge camera sets where sometimes it could struggle, especially as a, a black flash camera, you can have plenty of illumination, not going to be an issue. And if you like, so part of the challenge and the thing that never made sense to me, like in previous products, right? When you're running a, a two or three or even five megapixel image sensor, when you have something that is that far away from the camera, it's freaking hard to tell what it is if you have a deer out there in a field that's 120 feet away from the camera if you can't zoom in and see it like it's not doing good you point. any good it's it's saying hey there's a deer out there at 120 feet it's a buck i don't know which one it is i'm just gonna put it in, over here in this folder with 4k video you can zoom in and see everything you need Dude. to see and it's like that's something that people don't think about yeah 
it's a, yeah, that's a huge situation. And I know every, every year someone goes through exactly that scenario. Um, Fergie stuff, uh, quarter, uh, quarter inch, 20 millimeter threads on the bottom of the camera. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. So any of the past, uh, attachments that you purchased from us, you can use that right there on the bottom of the camera. So very cool. Uh, another question, Buckslayer, when you say 100 foot, is that a certain height off the ground? I hang my cameras up like 10 feet high. So that your detection range is going to be shorter than that. And that's just basic geometry, which uh, wasn't ever my strong suit. So maybe you want to you want to <laughs> say some more things here. <laughs> yeah, any <laughs> any any uh, any time you hang an elevated set and the things angled down, you're creating what we call like a static environment because the detection is you know, you have a field of view or field of detection. Like there's an angle there that the camera um, is built around as far as its detection circuit and distance as well. So when you're angling that thing down, again, we'll just use the scenario. If it's 10 feet up in the air, angled on a 45. Number one, 10 feet up, like uh, on a simple one-to-one -one ratio, you just created a 10 foot, um, a 10 foot gap underneath the camera where it's void of detection. But then also once it starts picking up, you know, whatever that, somebody smarter than me could use the uh, a squared plus b squared equals c squared or whatever. Is that yeah, what that is? yeah, that's what I was looking for. <laughs> um, you can figure out what that distance is, but no, you're not going to, if you have the camera angled up or up in the air 10 feet and angled down at a 45, there's not 100 feet there between the ground and the camera. So it's not, you know, it's yeah. not, you're not going to get it. Whatever that distance is, whatever the c squared distance is in that Pythagorean theorem is going to be the, the, the maximum amount of distance that you're going to pick up once it's the ground, like it's not going anywhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, any other questions here, Cameron, you want to throw up here? Um, do we have any sample videos for people to see? Yeah. in that in on our Instagram right now and on our YouTube, um, you can check out some of those examples. And so we were, uh, we've been in testing this and we'll have more and more and more examples to share with people too. So that's, um, uh, obviously a big part of this. Uh, Alex, uh, last one is the, is this discount only available for launch this evening? Great work guys. Uh, looks like the design and time, uh, was well spent on this. Appreciate that. So, um, we're going to leave this live while supplies last. So if you want to have a chance to win a free camera, uh, with the purchase, you have 48 hours to do that. And then if that code is live and active, you can save money. Once it is closed out, it is closed out. So, uh, be sure to, to lock one of those up if you guys are ready to do so um tate another question from tate depending on what mode the camera is set on can the batteries last a whole season would you recommend having an extra six batteries on hand to switch them out for the depleted batteries yeah they're gonna last the season like nine hours of of video runtime thirty six thousand to fifty thousand photos like unless you have some type of extreme use case i don't see i don't see the batteries not lasting a year at i mean I just no. So from my perspective, I would not have an additional set of batteries on hand to swap out. That's just me. You know, it, risk taker. Um, I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> Your risk tolerance. <laughs> I just well, just looking at the way that I use cameras, even like on a on a feeder type setting or a corn pile setting, like I'm not getting fifty thousand pictures in a year. Right. Uh and that's like maybe if you're in Texas and you know, you have a feeding program or something going on where you know you're getting that amount of amount of photos. I would say, yeah, then maybe you should have a second set um, on hand, or maybe run it with an external power source, whatever the case is. But I would use those metrics. Uh, what was the guy's name that asked that question again? I think it was Tate. Tate, if you're not getting more than thirty six thousand pictures in in a year or in a season, I would not buy another set of batteries and and have them for backup because I think more often than not they're going to sit on your shelf or sit on a charger and they're not going to get any use. If you're getting, you know, more photos than that or more than nine hours of video in a season, then maybe it makes sense to have, um, you know, a backup set. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Which is really great. I mean, I just, I'd probably be embarrassed to say how much I spent on batteries this past year. And I'm really excited to, to upgrade and, um, buy one set each. And I saw one comment too, there's less batteries in landfill too, which is it, I mean, when you, I don't take them all to the recycling center. I'll be honest. <laughs> you know, it's like there's just a lot of them, and it's, you kind of feel disgusting uh, when you dispose of those. Um, Dude, so. five gallon. We fill up five gallon buckets here at the office. I'm five sure. Yeah, like a handful of times a year, and they, those do go to a recycling center, but um, it's just a lot. Yeah, and I guess let me. We should probably cover where people can get these because it's 
again, like the, they're a little bit foreign to some folks. Um, you're not going to run down to, if there's a con to the product, you're not going to run down to your local Walmart or yeah. your Dollar General and, and grab these batteries. Like you're going to have to buy them ahead of time. Uh, we are going to be retailing um, the EBLs. And when I, when I throw out numbers of $20 for six, like that, this is what we're talking about. Mm-hmm. Um, those are a three amp hour battery. Um, and the price on these fluctuate, like we tested these Tenergies a lot too. Uh, this is a really, really good battery. I think it's made by, um, I think it's a Samsung battery actually re- rebranded, or maybe it's a Panasonic rebranded. I can't remember. Uh, those are really, really, really good batteries, but they're $14 a pop. So there's mm-hmm. like. There's a big price gap in, you know, what you can, what you can buy and what you can put in this camera, but we will have the EBLs available on our website, uh, in a, in a couple of months, we're just working through paperwork or whatever, become a retailer of those. And, um, you can find them basically anywhere online, battery junction, uh, battery city. Like you can get a lot of diff, you can go to a lot of different places and get them. Just stay away from the Chinese ones. Yeah. Um, Adam Elliott, will future cameras have the same rechargeable battery? That's a good question. I would say that's a pretty good, pretty good chance. <laughs> we get in trouble when we when we speak in concrete terms in, in development, but uh, definitely is on top of our mind here. Yeah. Um, Wendell, um, what's the biggest upgrade on this camera that wasn't on past camera? I mean, there is a this is a <laughs> this is a I mean, there's threefold. I don't if if I had to pick one, man. If I did have to pack, pick one, I'd probably say the the dual lens and dual image sensor, which are paired together, obviously, but that's a huge upgrade. And that's what, that's what makes this product uh, so special is, is those two specific things is, would you agree or would you come up with something else too? Yeah, no, there's more. Yeah. I, yeah. I agree with that. The, the image sensor set up, um, eliminating the IR filter, the power system. Those are the two biggest, those are the two biggest things, the two biggest competitive advantages. I think, um, the minute upgrades I think are that are probably overlooked by some people are the actual design of the tooling, like having a cable tunnel there to make the camera lockable. And then also, um migrating that dc jack out of the housing yeah. or out of the the, the the door portion of the housing being able to open and close that thing like with the lift the traditional lift series and even the render like it wasn't the greatest design with the dc jack going through that vertical vertical door um so you know addressing those two things on the housing side was pretty important and like i think the lcd screen the like non glare is something simple that is going to make a difference for for a lot of people make the the uh um the use case more enjoyable in the mm-hmm. field yeah i agree with all those things yeah i mean there's it's hard to pick one because this is truly we skipped a generation for a reason because there's just a lot of a lot of updates with this camera um any other questions here we can we can uh let a few more roll in here i just want to say thanks to everyone so much for joining in and spending some time this evening to you know, to, to hear about this, we're extremely thankful and uh, gracious for all the support here over the last nine years. And so we have CK, are the renders obsolete now? Uh, they are discontinued, but I wouldn't say they're obsolete because I'm still using them every day. Um, still an excellent camera and uh, they're no longer available on our website, but definitely not obsolete. That camera was well, well beyond its time when we released it. Uh, Caesar, uh, can we buy outside of the United States in Spain? The uh, 4, thousand percent. Yeah. Yeah. We ship internationally. Very good. Just go to the website, exodusoutdoorgear.com. Get yourself yes. some Lift 4K Ultras. Ultra. Yeah, we haven't said Ultra enough because it, it is Ultra. Um, another question here, when, uh, where, I, where can I put this? So you go add the camera to cart, and then once you add it to cart, go to checkout, and then there's going to be a place where you can put discount codes, and just put in the number four and the letter K, and then you'll save your $50 per camera. This has been fun. This has been a very fun project to see come to life. We're very excited to get this in the hands of everyone. I think uh, a lot of people have been asking for this type of product. And the Lyft series, like I said before, has been the cornerstone of Exodus forever. The render was basically a Lyft type cell camera. And so, you know, over the last nine years, this series is what's been uh, what we've been best known for. And this is a major jump and major step forward. No doubt. It's been fun too. It's it's been fun. It's been frustrating. Like this was a product that we wanted to be to have done last year, um, and you know, was vendor issues, supply issues, or whatever. We had to make some changes on the image sensor, which probably worked out for the better. Honestly, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think I we're. So. 
my watch is talking to me. Yeah, I completely agree. We have Doug Sharp. Thanks for all the information. Another great product. We really appreciate that, Doug. And uh, it, I'm just I'm just so excited to get this camera in, in the hands of everyone. I think you guys will be thoroughly impressed. Uh, we, we can tell y'all. We can tell you everything we think about it, but we want to hear what you guys think about it. Um, we have. I love the podcast with Tony. That Tony Tony Lapratz. That was a very fun episode, <laughs> and we we've been we tried to record with him. I think it was two years ago when he was at the show, and it just didn't work out. And I just walked up to his booth. I was like, "Hey, do you want to record a podcast?" He's like, "Yeah." <laughs> so uh, I didn't know much about him before then, but I I really enjoyed that conversation, and uh, I we're gonna try to do more content with him because he's a uh, just the passion that guy has for what he's talking about, uh, the way he explains it in a simple way. And after we released it, I had a lot of people reach out to me and say, Hey, I've been to his boot camp and it was really great. And so he's just, he's a white tail pioneer, but also, uh, uh, we should almost have an underground series because a lot of people know of him, but there's more people that didn't know about him, which I, I found pretty interesting. I was, I was guilty of that too. Me as well. Like I've known the name, but I think in the digital space, like where we're all consuming content, like he doesn't have as big of a footprint. So it's, he's just overlooked, man. Yeah, but like sitting down and talking with him for an hour, like I want to talk to him for like a hundred hours. Like I want to go, like just pound a bunch of Red Bulls, stay up a hundred hours and talk to <laughs> white tail deer hunting with him because he's yeah. like, I think a lot of the concepts other people are talking about are doctored up in a more, I don't know, articulate way to make something look better or sound better than what it is. And Tony's just like, no, do X, Y, and Z. Like that's it. Thirty second answer. It's the same thing. So yeah. I, I feel like a lot of the guys that are talking about similar stuff are taking it from Tony and doctoring it up a little bit. At least that's my, that was my perception with yeah. spending an hour and a half with the guy. Yeah. A true expert can explain something, explain something that is perceived as complex in an easy way. And that's the epitome of Tony. Good way um, to so will the discount work on your cell cams also? No, no, we, we don't have any discounts for the rival right now. Um, you'll want to stay tuned for the anniversary sale. And then we also, uh, you just want to, the email list is like the, the water cooler for Exodus. If you want to know what's going on, make sure you subscribe to that. Add us to your contact list. So it hits your inbox. Oh, <laughs> my, yeah. my, uh, Thank you, Richard. I have it. So, I have it on a table over there. I look at it every day, <laughs> but, but the Cape is at the tax service. <laughs> um, let's see. Do you plan on expanding further with the non-cellular cameras? Maybe, maybe not. Time stay will tuned. tell. Time will tell. Or, absolutely. Um, SB24 soon, question mark, Greg. Mm -hmm. It it's takes not a lot. looking that good, to be honest. Like, not looking good for the SB24 in, in 2000. We're in 24, right? Yeah. Yes, 2024. sir. Yeah. Not not looking that strong, but we'll have we will have a product. Yes, we will have mm -hmm. another external power source product, but uh, we don't have a date or any additional information on the SP twenty four right now. Mm -hmm. Lucas, good to see you in here. Um, will these be included in the trade up trade in program? Absolutely, yeah. So we're we're going to be nailing that down here, <clears throat> and we're gonna ha you're going to be able to. You, man, it would be hard to trade in original lift, but <laughs> hypothetically, you could trade in original lift for the newest model. Dude, we just had an original lift come back um, last week, eight years old, and it just crapped the bed this, crazy. this past, I think it was December. It's and it was just an SD card issue. Wow. Yeah. There was a, there was a gentleman that just followed me on Instagram here today, and I was just looking at his profile, and I saw he ran our cameras. And uh, I saw a post that, it, that was actually kind of heartfelt because he's like... I, in 2015, I took a chance on these guys, and this has been one of my favorite cameras ever. And it was the Lift One, and That's just cool. to see, just to see, you know, because ultimately, you work hard, you clock in, you clock out, and you only make so much money. And how you deploy those dollars when they come to us, it means the world to us because we know what that's like, and that's why we put so much uh, emphasis on building a quality product and ultimately backing them up for five years because you're exchanging your time for our product, however you look at it, and we want to take care of you. That's right, man. Let's see. Anything else? <laughs> Somebody's eating steaks over bogeys, man. I'm a little jealous. I'm coming off of a... Dude, oh, nice. <laughs> nice. 
Yeah, um, Iowa gun guy here late because of, I mean that's if there was an excuse, that is an excellent excuse. Anyone that's in Albia has to go uh, to Bogey Steakhouse there. Uh, whenever I go there, which is usually once or twice a year, they treat you like family, man. Like you get a hug, you get a how are you doing, and just, that's just really cool. And they they do an excellent job. I love that place. <laughs> Uh, ben, I got some still going strong almost nine years now. Haven't had one completely kick the bucket completely. I mean, that that's a testament right there. I mean, that's the go. true testament of time. Thanks for believing us back in the day, Ben. I have my, I mean, here, yeah, that's, that's so cool now to see all still. these guys in here that, that have been here for so long and still using our cameras. <laughs> Ray, <laughs> Ray does this mean camera? He already works extremely hard. I don't know if we get any more out of him. He does a great job. <laughs> But he's going to have a lot more B-roll, a lot more 4K oh, B-roll that will make his job a little bit easier. Fact, fact. Um, any update about your camera app for the Rob? That's a, yeah, that's a great question. Exodus app, what do we got? Uh, yeah, it's coming. It's coming in just a couple months. We're still working through some, still working through uh, some things on that. We are, you know, the original, I don't know if we ever talked about the launch date on that, but like a year ago, we said May 1st. We're a few weeks behind, but it will be at the beginning of summer. Yeah, and, and to touch on that too, I mean, one of the pain points that people have discussed is, you know, data plans, when you have a lot of cameras, those add up. And I think everyone's going to be very excited once we release the Exodus app and uh, some of the different competitive options out there and a limited plan, which I know is very important for a lot of people. So we're, we're extremely excited about that. And we think it's going to be the most user-friendly uh, app out there and arguably some of the most affordable data plans too. Let's see. I think Lucas has another one in here. We have Scott just chimed in. What are the features? So go to our website. We have all of them on there. <laughs> yeah, the, the the Cliff Notes version is right there on the screen. Save, save me some save me some words. Had a bear. Lucas said had a bear to try to eat a lift two this year in October, punching two holes in the body of the camera, and it was still running when I pulled it a few weeks back. <laughs> That's, I mean, bomb proof, bear proof. <laughs> do you know? Uh, do you know Aaron Blair? He's uh, oh, maybe I shouldn't describe him and use his name and <laughs> right. Um, Where does he live? Anyways, the one gentleman that that uh, that is always in Harrisburg with Dorge had a oh, lift yeah. two shot with a twenty two bullet lodged in to the PCB of the camera, and that camera still works today incredible it was crazy bulletproof i think we've we've Kinda, used that in some, yeah. some, in some some ads there so it is bulletproof we have proof of that um no that's it's so cool to hear people that are running the original lift and uh keep those suckers running and do an additional upgrade because it, you're gonna I, i'm trying to it'd be like the first iphone to the iphone 14 <laughs> it's kind of what it's gonna yeah. feel like yeah let's see Buck Slayer misses the gear gadget episodes. We might have to, uh, we may have to reboot that or maybe do uh, 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 some mini series of that. We could probably bring that back in maybe some capacity. Yeah. Let's see. Michael McKenzie looking forward to some different data plans seeing as I'm running a bunch of cell cameras. Definitely like the 4k do, do the video. Does the video have sound? Yes. The video does have sound. Uh, which is always really cool just to hear the or the grunts or you see, you know, the deer running in the background, just the chaos. And dude, where's your mind right now? Like we, we're just listening <laughs> to some videos with like some gobblers just hammering. And like, it's man, spring, spring dude. Nah, it's, it's time to plant trees. <laughs> time <laughs> to plant trees. Uh, yeah. Awesome. The audio on it's pretty damn good. Um, I think probably this thing's going to live forever on social, right? I think we can yeah. probably come back in here and uh, the, the videos are going to get compressed because you're uploading to Facebook, but you get an idea of what you what you're looking at. We could probably come back in here and um, upload some examples for folks over yeah, the course definitely. of the next next week or so. Um, Adam has a good question. Will the older renders be able to use the new Exodus app or just the new rivals? All of all of the cell cameras we've ever sold will be migrated to the Exodus app. So, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, you'll be able to, <coughs> excuse me, you'll be able to put all of them onto the Exodus app. Save your save some money and. Uh, we think have a better experience too. So um, definitely do that. We have Jim. Good to hear. Good to hear from you, Jim. So you can use the code 
uh, the number four and the letter K, and you're going to save 50 bucks. So just at checkout, put the four and K, uh, just two characters. Yep. Or you could just come see us at the office, Jim. <laughs> Burnell, good to hear from you. Are you releasing a newer version of the render? Uh, Rival's here to stay for the time being, but uh, I'll, I'll pass it off to Chad. There's some... Um... There's there's a bunch of stuff still happening in 2024. I know this is the second is this the second or third product release we've done. I think this is a, I don't know. I, in, in the year. Oh, this is a, I think second. this is the second. Yeah, there's some more stuff happening. Um as far as like a render 2.0, no. As far as a additional cell camera option or variant, yeah. Very good. Coming soon. We got to get through what we have going on right now, <laughs> which is all exciting yeah. stuff. All very exciting stuff. Well, I think uh, we'll, we'll leave it here for if anyone else has anything else, but just want to say thanks once again. And um, anyone that's on the fence, if you order a camera in the next 48 hours, you're going to have an opportunity to win another camera. If you buy five cameras, you're going to have five chances. If you buy one camera, you're going to have one chance. So a um, great way to kind of uh, test your luck ultimately, and then uh, have a camera, a great camera shipped to you late summer. Um, but anything else here that, and I think we're, I think we're all out of questions here, so we'll, uh, we can wrap it up. Just want to say thanks once again. Um, use the code four letter K at checkout, save $50. Um, we have a, a pretty cool thing going on too. If you're getting ready to go to tack or shoot some turkeys with your bow, you can use uh, the code trade to save 15% off on our entire arrow lineup. So that's the bear shafts. That's the tailor built arrows. And, uh, Similar to the trading program with the cameras, use the code trade. We're going to ship you cameras, take that box and send in your junky arrows that you don't use and are probably unsafe <laughs> and, uh, and ship them and we'll dispose them properly. And then just want to say thanks to everyone here that joined. Want to say thanks to Cameron for managing all of this and doing an excellent job and Justin uh, handling the customer service. And if you have a question, uh, give us a call tomorrow, send us an email and we're happy to answer any of your questions individually. And uh, just want to say thanks to everyone. We greatly appreciate it. And uh, these live streams are always fun to see familiar names and new names pop in and have questions. Yeah. Just uh, thanks, everybody, for the time. Appreciate you guys tuning in and the ongoing support from all the familiar names, the faces. It's cool. Cool to see.